Welcome back. I'm Valam Nayak, and in this video, we're going to cover the Course Schedule Planner. You can use this tool to select the courses you want to take in a semester, and it will create schedules for you. This video is part of a larger series about course registration at Rutgers, and you can find the link to that below. Before watching this video, make sure you see our videos on the Schedule of Classes and Degree Navigator. There's some useful information there that you will need when using Course Schedule Planner. Also keep in mind that the Course Schedule Planner is for creating schedules, not for adjusting them. So if you're just trying to add or drop a course, you can skip this video for now. Let's start by searching for Course Schedule Planner. You can also start from your My Rutgers dashboard or navigate directly to sims.ruckers.edu slash CSP. Once you're on the page, you will need to log in with your net ID and password. That should bring you to the home page. From here, we can build a new schedule or view saved schedules. In the schedule of classes walkthrough, we saw that courses often had several sections. That allows us to mix and match sections to create the perfect schedule. However, it isn't that simple. Let's say you want to create a schedule with five courses, and each course has 10 sections. In that case, you would have up to 100,000 schedules to pick from. That's too many options, and that's where Course Schedule Planner can help. We'll start by clicking on Fall 2020. If this is your first time using this tool, a dialog should appear asking you to select your preferred campus. Let's say we have a parking pass for Bush, so we'll want to prioritize classes on Bush. We'll submit that, and we can change that by clicking on the Preferred Campus link at the top right. This page is a lot like the schedule of classes. Here, we can select our location and our level of study. Unlike the schedule of classes, we can't do a keyword search, so I recommend first using the schedule of classes and Degree Navigator to list out potential courses to take. Remember to pay attention to prereqs and course restrictions. Course Schedule Planner does not check for you, and you will run into issues later when registering on WebReg. Once you know which courses you need to take, we can add them to our schedule. I'll start by picking a few unique courses that Rutgers offers. In the drop-down menu, I'll type in 558 for International Studies and click Search. There's only one course I can take. So I'll click on the plus icon next to it and add it to my schedule. Adding the course to Course Schedule Planner is not the same thing as registering for the course, which we'll do in the next video. Next, I'll go to 575, which is Labor Studies. Click Search and add course 250, Finance for Personal and Professional Success, to my list. If you add the wrong class, you can just click on the minus icon in the sidebar or the course list to remove it. Then I'll go to mathematics, which is 640. Search and add calculus two. And lastly, we'll take a burn seminar. In the Schedule of Classes video, we saw that the burn seminars fell under the 090 subject code. And we can see here that 090 is Arts and Sciences. We'll click Search. And we see two options for burn seminars. We can click on either option and look through the sections to see which seminar looks interesting. In this case, each section covers a different topic. I want to take section 37, the new theory of human memory, but there's no option to select just that section. So we'll add the whole course to our list and we'll be able to select sections later. We'll stop there. One thing to keep in mind as we select courses is to go by the course code and not just the name. Sometimes different courses will have the same name or similar names, and you do not want to accidentally take the wrong course. So make sure the course code lines up with what you see on Degree Navigator. 
Also, try to be within the 12 to 18 credit range. If you go below 12 credits, you are no longer a full-time student, and that can affect things like housing and financial aid, and your school may just not allow it. Going above 18 credits can be a lot, so I wouldn't do that unless you're sure you can handle it. Each school has its own rules on how many credits you can take, so research that or contact a school advisor ahead of time. Most students take around 15 credits each semester. I also want to reiterate how important it is to create a realistic schedule and check prereqs and course restrictions. Course Schedule Planner does not check for these things, so you need to do so. When pre-registration opens, classes can fill up very quickly, and you don't want to get an error message on WebReg because you created a schedule that you are not eligible to have. With these four courses in our list, we'll go to the next step by clicking Select Sections. Here, we see all the sections for our four courses. This is where we can narrow down the number of schedules we have to choose from. One thing to know is that changing any of the filters will reset your section selections, so we want to start by setting our filters. I'm not a fan of morning classes, so I'll uncheck mornings for the entire week. If you want to be more specific, you can click on the drop-down next to morning to specify what times morning represents. We can also click on the campus drop-down and specify where we want our courses. If you're too specific, you'll get a warning letting you know that Course Schedule Planner cannot create a schedule with your selections. For example, Global Awareness has only one section on Livingston campus. If we filter out Livingston, we get the error message. If instruction is fully remote for the upcoming semester, there's no reason to filter sections by campus. We can also filter out sections that have already filled up. I'll uncheck closed sections, so I only see sections I can currently register for. Course Schedule Planner does not save your selections, so if you refresh the page, you'll need to select sections all over again. To avoid that, we'll need to build a schedule and save it all in one sitting. We'll get to building schedules soon. The last thing I want to do on this page is go through each section and remove ones I do not want. If you have not already checked prerequisites and section restrictions, you want to do that now before moving on. You can see prereqs and course restrictions right on this page. I'll click on the Burn Seminars and look for section 37. If you have trouble finding a section that should be there, you may have unintentionally filtered it out. To select section 37, I'll first deselect all the sections. We'll ignore the error dialog. And I'll go back and select section 37. That's done. I'll minimize the burn seminars and expand the calculus course. First, I'll deselect the sections reserved for honor students. Here, I can also select sections based on the professor. However, I see that all of my selections have resulted in only four possible schedules, so we'll leave the remaining sections selected for now. Next, we'll click on Build Schedules. Right away, we see our first possible schedule, with the classes color-coded based on campus. This helps you visualize your week and ensure you have enough time between classes to get from one campus to another. The time of day matters here. Most of the time, you can get from Bush to Livy in 20 minutes, but going from Livy to Cook Douglas during rush hour can take up to an hour. While there are many buses, they don't always arrive on a consistent schedule, so expect some variability. Make sure to leave enough time so you're not late to classes often. If instruction is fully remote for the upcoming semester, you won't need to worry about catching a bus. We can see schedules in list view, or a calendar view, and we can hover over courses to see details, including the index number. Course Schedule Planner has created every possible schedule for us using our selections. We can go through each one by clicking Next. If a course has hours by arrangement, you won't see it in the calendar, but the section details will be shown below. Notice that my last three schedules all look the same. The only difference between these schedules is the calculus section. 
As I go through, you can see the index number of the calculus course change. In my case, I only have a few schedules to choose from, but you may have many more. If you keep getting schedules with one section you do not like, or you're not seeing enough options, you can always go back and adjust your filters. Once you find a schedule you do like, give it a name at the top and click Save. We'll call this My Schedule 1 and hit Save. Course Schedule Planner does not remember the filters you set or the sections you select, so you don't want to leave the site until you've gone through and saved all of the schedules you want. You can save up to 10 schedules, and I recommend having multiple schedules saved. This way, if a section you want fills up, you will have backup options. If we go to the Saved Schedules tab, we see our saved schedule. From here, we can register for all of these sections just by clicking the Register button. That will take you to WebReg and fill in the index numbers automatically. Later in the WebReg walkthrough, we'll finally register for classes and learn how to add and drop individual courses. If at any point you get stuck or need further assistance, you can contact your school's advising department. If you have technical questions, you can contact the Office of Information Technology. I'll see you in the next one.